بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, this is engineer fazl karim uh, and i am your teacher for the subject of civil engineering materials uh, and the course code of the subject is ce102 and today's topic for discussion is concrete uh, and this is lecture number 9 for the ninth week of the semester uh, particularly for the students of second semester you know first year and you know uh, the current subject doesn't have any prerequisite Uh, on the screen you can see my email address uh, kareem.sewlitrate.suit.edu.pk and this is for the purpose that if you feel any difficulty in studying current lecture so that you may access me through this email address uh, or you can access me through whatsapp group uh, where you can ask me uh, you know uh, any type of question uh, inshallah uh, whatever the question is i'll be able to answer you through uh, whatsapp Uh, and you know uh, the current lecture after recording will be uploaded to the portal.suit.edu.pk uh, and you can download it from there the interactive session uh, which will be you know uh, carried out uh, you know tomorrow will also be uploaded to the portal.suit.edu.pk and you can download it from there uh, the ppt lecture will also be there so you can uh, download it also from there course objectives to familiarize students about the characteristics of construction material used in civil engineering projects and to develop skills for identification and selection of suitable construction material for civil engineering projects these objectives have already been taught to you in the previous class uh, these two books have been recommended for you guys uh, and you can study uh, you know uh, these books yourself Uh, in today's uh, lecture we will be talking about uh, concrete here um, in the picture you can see uh, concreting uh, but first i would like to let you know or make you understand that what is concrete uh, as uh, you know concrete is basically a composite uh, material made up of coarse aggregate fine aggregate uh, uh, cement and uh, water uh, we are uh, actually when all these materials are mixed uh, together Uh, then the cement basically uh, form you know paste uh, uh, with you know wa uh, water actually when all these materials are mixed uh, then the chemical reaction among the constituents of cement and water take place which is called you know the hydration process and this process is also called the strength gaining process so uh, this process uh, you know will produce paste and the paste will then bind the inner particles of the uh, aggregate whether that is fine uh, uh, aggregate or that is a coarse aggregate and the freshly prepared concrete when it has not yet been set is called fresh or wet or green concrete but after the concrete has thoroughly set and fully hardened it is called hardened concrete set concrete or simply concrete uh it's there is another definition uh, the cement concrete is a composite material uh, where in a paste of cement made with water on solidification binds firmly together the inert materials of fine and coarse aggregate this is what i have already told you in the previous definition uh you know uh, it is was a tile material for construction and used in a variety of uh, works it is strong in compression but weak in tension as you know that the concrete uh, uh you know is very strong in compression it take much load in compression but uh, you know the main problem uh, with concrete is that its capacity in uh, you know tension is much smaller than capacity in uh, compression uh, or i or uh, i would like to say that uh, the concrete is very weak in tension uh, uh it cannot take uh, much load when that is subjected to uh, you know uh, tensile load uh here i would like to discuss that uh, when a simply supported beam uh, is made up of concrete or cement concrete is subjected to uh, bending or you know uh, flexure uh, then there will be to here i would like to discuss that uh, bending is called flexure and whenever a flexure member is or a simply supported beam Uh, is subjected to loading or bending there will be two type of stresses 
one is tensile stress and the other is compressive stress compressive stress will you know uh, uh, it will happen uh, above the neutral axis and tensile stress will produce you know below the neutral axis uh, so uh, here I would like to discuss that uh, if uh, the tensile stress exceeds the tensile strength uh, of the concrete in tension zone simply hairline cracks will produce at the bottom of the concrete initially these cracks will be uh, you know smaller but when uh, you know particularly pavement or cement concrete is subject uh, having hairline cracks are further subjected to compression uh, are sorry further subjected to bending uh, then the severity of the cracks will you know increase and these cracks will you know rise from bottom to top uh, so therefore in order to increase the capacity uh, of the concrete particularly in tension zone uh, the concrete or cement concrete is supposed to be reinforced in tension zone particularly in tension zone in order to uh, increase its capacity and tension so that it may take load uh, here in this figure you can see that this is neutral axis and above the neutral axis you know uh, this is basically these are compressive stresses and this below the uh, neutral axis this is tensile zone and these are basically tensile stresses and even here at the bottom I mean in tension zone you can see cracks initiated at the bottom uh, that will uh, you know yeah, that has started uh, moving towards uh, the top so in order to prevent concrete in tension zone these uh, the concrete is supposed to be reinforced in tension zone you know and this is bending which is called flexure and these two stresses compression and tensile are also called flexure stresses so this is very important uh, simply uh, the concrete after reinforcement is called a uh, reinforced concrete uh, but the concrete without reinforcement is called plain cement concrete here you can see reinforcement in this figure you can see reinforcement and that is for the purpose to increase capacity of the concrete in tension zone why cement concrete Cement concrete is important building material because of the following reason. It can be molded into any size and shape. Simply, the concrete after mixing, uh, you know, uh, can be molded because it's a plastic material and you can mold it into various shapes and the resulting product made up of concrete would be durable. That will be capable of taking, you know, uh, environmental at the uh, environmental stresses that will be capable of resisting environmental stresses or that is capable uh, to resist the alternate cycle of freezing time heating cooling and wetting drying and the second reason that why cement concrete is preferably used is that the material which are required for uh, concrete are easily available whether that is that is coarse aggregate fine aggregate or that is basically uh, cement or uh, you know water that is cheaply and easily available and uh, and the method to produce concrete or place you know is very simple uh, it pro it possesses adequate plasticity for mechanical working properties of cement concrete it has high compressive strength concrete is capable to take much load in the compression zone even that is even uh, you know uh, that uh, reinforcement is not required for compression zone but still uh, concrete is capable of taking much load in the compression zone but still if you want to increase its capacity uh, in the compression zone that can be reinforced that can be reinforced to further increase its capacity or load taking capacity it's free from corrosion and it hardens with age and continues for a long time after concrete has attained sufficient strength uh, and here you can see that the rate of gain uh, in strength with respect to time is given day first 16 percent gain in strength day 3 40 percent up to day 7 65 percent day 14 90 percent and day 28 98 percent strength uh, the concrete will gain and you here you can see in order to determine the compressive strength of the concrete usually two type of samples are preferably used in the laboratory one is cube and the other is cylinder here you can see it binds rapidly with steel 
and it is weak in tension as i already described that the uh, it is you know it binds rapidly with steel uh, but the problem in concrete is that it is weak in tension so that it needs to be reinforcement and after reinforcement that is usually called rcc or reinforcement concrete it forms a hard surface capable of resisting abrasion abrasion stresses or polishing it is usually porous concrete is usually porous you know that has pore that is permeable that has the, the property to transfer water from one place to another through interconnected wires but the porosity can be increased depending upon the degree of compaction that's why some vibrators are preferably used in order to compact the concrete so that the grains of the concrete may come closer to each other uh, by expelling airs from the concrete here you can see main reinforcement cross section through beam and reinforced that has reinforced constituents of concrete important constituents of the concrete are basically cement which is used as a binder and sand fine aggregate stone or broken bricks coarse aggregate and water this is cement which will be combined with you know uh, aggregate uh, and sand and after that basically water is added and when water is added the chemical reaction among the constituent of cement and water will take place which is called the strength gaining process and this process will basically produce a paste which will you know bind the inert aggregates cement before ordinary portland cement lime was basically preferably used preferably used as a cementing material uh, but you know the strength of uh, the uh, the strength of concrete where lime was used is basically not uh, you know much or basically less as compared to the concrete prepared in uh, cement at present most of the concrete work in building construction is done with ordinary portland cement some special type of cement uh, used in the uh, you know local market you know currently in practice and available in local market are portland cement and this is basically lucky cement fine aggregate uh, you know uh, a detailed lecture uh, has already been given to you guys about the aggregate but for simplicity purpose i would like to revise that uh, the aggregate uh, which passes through 4.75 ri mean number 4 cu is termed as a uh, basically uh, fine aggregate and the it plays where it is very important that usually uh, the river sand is basically used but that is not well graded so uh, if that is not available uh, then the stone dust is basically used but the stone dust is usually you know that is well graded that would contain all grains uh, you know if you carry out uh, its gradation so uh, this uh, if you know uh, stone dust is used in concrete then be, because it is well graded and therefore the strength of the concrete prepared in stone dust will be much as compared to the strength of the concrete uh, you know prepared in river sand coarse aggregate those uh, materials uh, are the material retained on number four or 4.75 mmcu is called as coarse aggregate and this is broken rock uh, water uh, water is the main constituents you know uh, of concrete uh, reacting for strength after uh, so responsible for strength after reacting with uh, you know uh, cement and it should be free from oils it should be free from acid or alkalis it should be free from iron vegetable matters uh, or any other substance which is likely to have adverse effect on concrete uh, it should be fit for drinking purpose function of water it acts as a lubricant for fine and coarse aggregate and after lubrication it would be easy for the grains of the material to slide on each other and move towards whites during compaction process it is chemically with cement to form paste which binds aggregate and reinforce i already described it is necessary to flux the cementing material over the surface of the aggregate water is necessary for hydration chemical action Mm, here in this slide the chemical reaction among the constituents of water and cement has been shown but where the main role is basically played by c3 uh, s tricalcium silicate tricalcium silicate hydrate rapidly and forms you know uh, 
early strength i mean tricalcium silicate is responsible for early strength of the concrete but the main problem with it is that it produces more amount of heat during hydration process and you know water will be required to eliminate that heat but uh, the cement with more content of c3s is better uh, you know uh, in cold weather concreting uh, where the uh, heat which is produced during the chemical reaction will be you know uh, expelled or eliminated due to the cold weather preparation of concrete mix there are two types of concrete mixing one is hand mixing where the material are manually mixed and the other is batch mixing uh, and the other is machine mixing so mach in machine mixing uh, uh, the mixing of the constituents of concrete is basically uh, you know uh, done by uh, machines and there are basically two types one is continuous mixer and the other is batch mixers in continuous mixers uh, uh, continuous mixer are basically used in massive construction uh, where large and continuous flow of concrete is required and the machine uh, which is basically used for mixing uh, basically is composed of various type of blades and the, all the constituents uh, are fed to the machine and then these blades you know are connected to a shaft when the shaft rotates then all the materials are basically mixed by the blades and after uh, preparation of wet concrete the, uh, the concrete is basically supplied through conveyor built connected to the machines batch type concrete mixer in batch type of concrete mixer the desired proportion of material are fed into the hopper of a drum in which the material gets mixed by the series of blades or you know baffles inside the mixer types of batch mixer one is tilting drum type non tilting drum type and reversing drum type in the tilting drum type mixer components are fed in the revolving drum in a tilted position and after some time the concrete mix is discharged by tilting the drums in the opposite direction in the non-tilting drum type mixer the drum remains rotating in one direction and emptied by means of hopper which tilts to receive the discharge in the reversing drum type mixer the entire drum rotates around its axis as materials are loaded through a charge tube at one end of the drum and exit through a discharge tube at the opposite end of drum. Avoid using the mixer. Core aggregate should be fed first. These are the you know very important uh, terms which you need to uh, understand and remember that the core segregate should be fit first sand and cement should be put afterwards in this revolving state the components get mixed you know while water is poured with the help of can the concrete should be mixed for at least two minutes the time being measured after all the ingredients including water you know have been fed into the drum compaction of concrete the compaction is basically uh, you know a process to uh, you know compact the concrete or to vibrate the concrete so that the grains of the concrete may get closer to each other by expelling air from concrete but here it is very important to discuss that the uh, you know uh, the process of shifting of concrete from uh, you know uh, fluid state to solid state is basically called sitting uh, our initial sitting and the time required for it is called sitting time and that is basically 30 minutes so the concrete after mixing needs to be you know used for placing within 30 minutes uh, it is these are some important steps that the crude oil or grease is usually applied to the shuttering before you know concreting to prevent the shuttering uh, absorbing the water from the concrete or getting stuck to it I mean the farm work is required to be lubricated uh, you know with oil so that the concrete material may not stick to it in placing the concrete care should be taken to see that it should not be thrown from heights the fall height you know the fall height must be minimum if you are going to you know uh, throw it from you know uh, five or six photo then the coarse and finer particle will get separate from each other and that will cause a segregation over compaction 
over compaction may lead to segregation you know if the compaction is you know more than uh, the specified value then it will cause you know segregation and segregation is the separation of the constituents of the concrete uh, or if the compaction is low then uh, you know uh, different wides will get together they will unite and will you know produce a big wide which is called a honeycombing here you can see uh, these are called there are some vibrators which are basically used to vibrate the material of the concrete so that it may get closer to each other and expel air internal vibrators external vibrator and these are surface vibrators the internal vibrators are commonly used in large work for flat surface compaction the vibrator is immersed in the full depth of concrete layer in order to vibrate the material so that it may get closer to each other and become denser so that it may become impermeable or the degree of permeability may decrease external vibrators are placed against the farm work and are only adopted for thin section of members are in place where internal vibrators cannot be used with ease it is connected to the farm work or you know uh, small elements uh, so that it may vibrate the whole element and so that uh, the grains of the concrete may get closer to each other and become denser by expelling air. Surface vibrators are generally used in concrete road construction. Uh, it is basically used to smooth the surface and also to vibrate the materials, uh, you know, uh, the constituents of the concrete existing in the surface uh, so that it may get, uh, get closer to each other and expel air and become denser so that it may withstand traffic and environment. So thank you very much.